Welcome to Vision Banquet 2011. Isn't it hard to believe that seven years ago we had our very first I Can See It Banquet? And all of those of us who were there for that first banquet remember the enthusiasm and the excitement as we got ready to picture the new First Baptist Church on Highway 75. And it's amazing as we look around here and see all the beautiful things that came together because of that first banquet in 2004. We've been blessed because we've come a long way. We've given a lot of money. We have sacrificed more than we thought we could sacrifice. We've spent more than we thought we could spend. But God's been good and God is blessed and I'm thankful He has. And just like our theme throughout the whole years was I can see it, I want to kind of talk about now is now we can see it. But what is it that we're going to see next? What about next? What's in front of us now for First Baptist Church? And that's why we had a vision banquet tonight. A vision banquet to kind of spell out and to show what's coming up next for First Baptist Church. And I thought about vision and that word. And uh, the other day I was in Omaha, I was at a conference, and I saw this man walking around. This man was, had a dog in front of him, uh, and he was guiding him throughout the way and around the people. And this blind man was one who couldn't see the things around him. And as we were approaching this vision banquet, my mind started kind of going and thinking about eyesight and vision. And I almost put myself in that man's shoes for a little bit. And I thought about if I were to be the one that didn't have any vision, if I couldn't see the things in front of me or around me or the, the loved ones. And I, I started thinking about that and boy, I would, I'd give a lot of things to be able to have my vision. I'd rather lose an arm than um, lose my eyesight. I'd rather lose a toe than my eyesight. I'd rather lose a lot of things than my own eyesight. It's something that so often, you know, I think we can take for granted. We take for granted the fact that we can see what's in front of us, that we can watch this video right now. But for each and every one of us, there was a time where even though we have vision, we can see things around us, we thought we should go and get our vision checked out and see if we could maybe improve our vision. And there we went to the eye doctor. We've all done it probably as we've walked into the eye doctor. And I remember for me the first time I went to the doctor and uh, the eye doctor and as I saw the, the glasses along the wall, Man, I saw all those glasses and I got so excited about which ones I was going to wear. And I went into the little exam room there and I uh, sat down and they do some tests and then they put that little puff in your eye. I never understood why they put that puff, it kind of stings. But uh, I, you put that puff in your eye then you go to the next room where the doctor exam is and they do the, the exam on you. You put your chin on the little strap there and he looks in your eyes and examines some things and then he looks out on the, the chart and it says, which one is more clear to you? Which one can you see better? Would it be this number one, and then he flips a little switch, or number two? A number one, or a number two? And we always have to tell him which one was which, and, um, and then he from there prescribes us what we would need. And boy, I remember for me, I, I uh, went through that test, and then he said, you're gonna need glasses, and I was so excited. I looked at all those glasses, and I picked out the ones I wanted, and boy, if I, if I would know now what I know then, I'd realize just how dorky those glasses made me look. I'm thankful for doctors who aren't afraid to prescribe what's necessary. I've never had a doctor that I'd go in and uh, they find something that's needed, whether it be an eye doctor or a regular doctor, and they don't fill out the prescription or they don't tell us what we need. And I'm thankful that when I went to the eye doctor that first day, he told me, here's your prescription. Here's what you need to get fixed. And so you may ask, what does all this have to do with why we're here tonight? Well, this is a vision banquet. And we want to talk a little bit about spiritual vision. And I believe that our physical vision can often be like our spiritual vision. Now the only difference is, is that so often we can go through life with our spiritual vision being subpar, being not what it needs to be. And we don't even see the need for a fix. It's easier to go through life with our spiritual vision hurting than our regular vision hurting. Our physical vision, if that um, gets bad, we instantly go to the doctor. We say we want to be able to see things clear. But spiritual vision, we can kind of go through the motions and not see the greater cause, not see what's in front of us with our spiritual vision. And so I want to help tonight. And just like the doctor has a prescription, just like the doctor takes a test, I want to take a little test tonight. And I want to take a test and as, when we would go to the doctor, we'd look at the images and tell them which one looks clear to us, one or two, one or two. I want to have a test tonight and I'm going to show you some images that I want you to tell me which one would you say you're more drawn to? Would it be number one or number two? Now this will be a test on our spiritual vision to see where our vision is for the cause of Christ. 
And so let's take this test together and you tell me which one would you say you're more drawn to? Which one are you more passionate about? The items in number one or number two? Let's begin. Number one. Number two. Number one. Number two. Number one. Number two. Number one. Number two. Jesus, I baptize in my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bearing the lights of His death. Praise the Lord. Okay, the test is over. Now the question is, how do we do? And you may say, well, that was easy for me. I clearly like and enjoy when I see someone get baptized. I clearly like and enjoy when someone gets saved. And certainly we all do. But the true test and the true way, as, a, as let's say a doctor here, I would like to say, for us to take that test properly, you have to answer for me a question. And this question would be, which one can you say you've spent more time and money on in the last six months? Oh man, that makes it a little more difficult, you see, because those other things, the number one things, they take a lot of our time and money. They absorb us, but the true, the true test of our spiritual vision would be to say, which one are we putting more of an emphasis on in life? Our time and our money. Would it be on the number one images, which certainly aren't bad things, but the devil wouldn't like to trip us up with bad things if he could. He'd rather get us distracted with good things. And I think certainly that's what happens with spiritual vision with most Christians is not that we get caught up with bad things, but we simply spend too much time and energy and money on good things. So how do we see things? Eternal or temporal? Temporal is so often what's in front of us. Temporal is so often what gets the attention. And I want to encourage us today to focus ourselves on spiritual things. And the way to do that would be to look through everything just like you would look through glasses and it changes the images in front of you. It's an amazing thing is I can put on a pair of glasses and the images in front of me are all clear and different. And to make our spiritual vision better, we must look at things through the cross. Everything through the cross. Would this matter to God? Is this what I'm doing now, what I'm spending my money on, is this as important as the, as the cross was to God when His Son died on it? And if we look at everything through the cross, our vision will begin to change. We'll see things differently. We'll see the fact that it'd be more important to help a little kid and show them how to be saved or to uh, run on a bus route or work in a nursing home ministry or work in a jail ministry or simply serve in a ministry in the church or to uh, give financially to the missionary so others can be saved. All those things would look so much different if we look through the cross. Let's look back on the past five weeks and see some of the things that we've done as a church that's eternal, had an eternal cause, an eternal effect on many people's lives. Look with me on the highlights from the last five weeks.
uh, 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 Mohammed. Yeah. You think of Hare Krishna. Yeah. You think of Joseph Smith. Yeah. Who do you think of? Jesus. Jesus. Let's tell who you represent. Jesus. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus Christ was a perfect, sinless son of God who died. Why did Jesus die? Because I'm a sinner. He paid for my sin. He paid my sin there. So I don't have to go to a place called... My name is Jerry Wyatt, a missionary to Tanzania. We've been serving in Tanzania with my wife Rachel and our son David since 2009. These past two and a half years, uh, the Lord has blessed tremendously and we've been able to see many hundreds of thousands of people saved uh, through the different ministries, whether it's Bible clubs, the public school ministry, uh, there at the church, there at Faith Baptist, uh, out in the villages and things of that nature. We thank you so much for your prayers, your financial support. We appreciate Pastor Wicks and his family and the friendship and, and what they've meant to us uh, throughout the past several years. We ask that you would pray as we look to our future on our second term. Uh, the Lord has burdened my heart uh, to go back to Tanzania. Uh, this term, not, not to go back to Morogor where we've been working, but moving to a new city, starting a new work, starting a new church. And so you be in prayer for us about that. We thank you so much again for all your prayers, your financial support. It means so much to us. Y'all are holding the ropes truly uh, for us as we go there to Tanzania. Thank you. Let's all rally together with clear spiritual vision and make this next year one that will matter for eternity. We set a high goal of 500 salvation decisions this year and 60 baptisms. This would be a record for First Baptist Church, but the Bible does say to whom much is given, much is required. This next song is, May the Lord Find Us Faithful. And let's all consider what we can do more for the cause of Christ in 2012. 